Welcome to Boomhauer 69 channel. And today Boomhauer is going to um, read an article I found here about a uh, vintage, uh, about a car manufacturer from the um, 1900s. They um, started out in the, um, this car manufacturer started out around 1912 producing a, what they call a cycle car, and then it went out in 1915. And I'm going to read the, the article about this about this company and then at the end I'll give my thoughts and opinions and what I liked about their their car and stuff and everything. You'll see pictures of it in this video kind of throughout but and what their car looked like that they manufactured. Now one thing is since I'm in the process of trying to figure out how to build a, a horseless carriage rich car, a car that, a vintage automobile car that looks like it came from the 1800s, 1900s. I've been doing a ton of research about different types of car manufacturers. How did they get started? Like, like Chevy. Chevy was simply started by, um, Louis Chevrolet, a, a race car driver, and his brother Arthur, and, and his other brother, I forget the name of his other brother right offhand, and the Chevy brothers formed the Chevy car company with a guy named Durant, and that was um, part ownership of General Motors and therefore and stuff. So I've been doing a ton of research on how car manufacturers got started, even the ones that were defunct and sold off to some other company or ones that just simply went out and they're no longer in existence and stuff and figuring out how they got started and, and how they got started, why did they go out of business, you know, that sort of thing. And this is one of those Companies that designed the car and nowadays nobody ever heard of them because they started in I think it was 1912 or 1913 1914 19 round there um, It started this car company and then it just soon after they started to release it to the market They went out. I think it was started in 1912 and then defunct in 1915 and I'll read this article here. I'll put um, links in the description for this article if you'd like to go back and read this yourself and stuff. I do a lot of history. You know, I even, as a recently discovered some car companies that were back in the 1900s, 1800s that were making cars, and I didn't even know there was such a thing. I didn't know that company existed, and it was fun to learn about, learn about how they got started and how they they went out or how are they still in existence today and stuff, you know. So, therefore, I'll be on some of them because there's so many cars out there. The Hudson's, which one a lot of people heard of, and AMC and all kinds of, you know, there's the Packard is, an, is a popular one, you know, and stuff. There's so many out there. I will try to cover some of them and do maybe later on do these sort of videos about them and what and what I have found, and this is an article I found about one. I'm gonna try to do more, starting out with kind of rare ones, you know, the ones that, the ones that people never really heard of and how they got started and went out, of course, and then, then later on, some of the more kind of well-known ones and stuff. And even some of the already cars that are still in the today, like Chevy, Ford, and stuff, the ones where, because everybody knows about Henry Ford and basically how he got started, and I might, I plan on doing a, a video about how Chevy got started, because Chevy's a real popular one that a lot of people don't know how it got started and, and stuff. And a little brief history on Chevy. All it was is Chevy got started because there was about three brothers named, last name Chevy, and they were all mechanics, race car drivers from Switzerland, Swedish, uh, Swedish I think Swiss, Swiss, they were Swiss, if I remember right, and they um, started up the Chevy company, and then another guy came along named Durant that had um, that was um, part ownership in um, General Motors GM, and that's how Chevy kind of roughly came about there. But I'll cover them another time. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about the this article here that I found on the internet. Again, I'll put links in the description for this video if you want to follow along. It's from a website called. Hemmings, and it's a story. It's a, it's about the um tr Trumbo car. For those who don't know what it is, Trum Trumbo's 
Cycle Car, it's about a company that was started in, I think it was 19, 1913 or 1912, and then it ended in 1915, and they only made about a handful of cars, about 2,000 cars, and now they're a car manufacturer. They defunct in 1915, and it's one of those, if you get one, find one today at auction, you got a rare piece, because they only made like 2,000, and, and that was it. And they just call this classic cars, um, it's a classic car audio. No, I don't know much about what I just found this article and thought it was interesting to share. And I've been doing a ton of research on trombones and according to this article I'm going to be reading, the this information, I looked at other websites and they're all saying basically the same thing, so I'm going to say this article is pretty accurate on the history about trombos from what I understand now. Trumbo is spelled T-R-U-M-B-U-L-L-S. They was a car company that made what they call a cycle car. And I'll read the article here about it. Um, It says in this article, in this article, it's a magazine company, category magazine it says in this article, in the long history of American automobiles, there's been numerous instances of young companies being torpedoed before they had a chance to become well established. True, there's from that, the beginning of car making, and even nowadays, there's companies out there that get started and then they go under, you know. So, chance to become a well established in one case. It was done both metaphoric, metaphorically and literally. That unfortunate company was Trumbo of Bridgeport, Connecticut. There was a company started here in the United States of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I will be showing pictures of the car and the car that they feature in the ad here throughout this video. You will see pictures of it pop up on the car that they designed. <clears throat> Again, it was called a Trumbo Cycle Car is what they call it. Um, I think they actually called the company Trumbo Cycle Car Company. And what I found on the internet is the company selling cars here in the United States didn't do so well because cycle cars wasn't really a popular thing in the United States. So they mostly sold their cars overseas. The Trumbo Automobile was designed during 1912, 1912 by Detroit engineer Harry Stoops, or Stops, there's two O's, S-T-O-O-P-S, Harry Stoops, with the engine developed by the Herman, Herman, um, H. E R M A N N Engineering Company Stoops Enter Engineered the Light Vehicle for the American Cycle Car Company, which one source claims was based in Detroit while another says Bridgeport, Connecticut. However, before the car entered production, the business was acquired by two Connecticut brothers, Alexander and Isaac, Isaac Trumbo, who promptly renamed it the Trumbo Motor Car Company. So two brothers bought this car idea and then they tried to make a go at it, who promptly renamed it the Trumbo Motor Car Company. As cycle cars went, the new Trumbo was a dandy riding an 80 inch wheelbase and 44 inch tread. It could also, it could hold two adults in reasonably comfort. Ground clearance was a generous nine inches, nine inches. Careful engineering kept the weight down to 915, 950 pounds and the company advertising claimed the Trumbo could go as fast as 50 miles per hour 
were quite good for that era of car. Yeah, uh, back then, if you made a car that went 50 miles per hour, man, you you had some speed there. Nowadays, we got cars that go over 300, 500 miles per hour, practically. Quite good for that era. Power was supplied by a water-cooled 86.4 inch cubic inch, 18 horsepower side valve, four-cylinder engine that was smooth and more balanced of more balance of the drivetrain consisted of a friction disc transmission and chain drive during the 1914s. The first year of production, the following year, these were replaced by a conventional three-speed three-speed gearbox and shift drive. Production apparently began in late 1913 with the 1914 models. Two body styles were offered intentionally a roadster. Two body styles were offered intentionally a roadster priced at $425 and two door sedan tagged at $600. I wish they make cars that price again. And a Four and two door sedan tagged at 600. Advertising called the Trumbo America's first fully equip equipped light car because standard equipment included electric lights and horn, a top side curtains and windshield, along with tools and a tire pump. Items that cost extra on some automobiles, Trumbull's production plant was in Bridgeport, which was a major manufacturing center at the time, as well as home to the, the local, mo mobile, local mobile, the Trumbull's family was already a noted manufacturer as a owner of the Connecticut Electric Manufacturing company Trumbull's Motor Car became a sort of an offshoot of that business. Now, at this time, for those of you who don't know, back in 1913 and the 1900s, around this time, this car manufacturer was was made. Made um the um electric lights on cars was like an option, like it was rare, kind of a rarity thing, and them making this a standard thing on the car would, would, would have been a wild thing back then, because this was around the time when electric lights on automobiles first started to pop on scene, when, when electric lights started to come into play and was kind of a new thing, so it was kind of an option, because before that, they would have gas gas lights on, on cars where you would have like a wick inside, you'd open up and you would light the wick and light the gas and the gas would ignite the lights and make the lights work. And, and of course, electric lights were a new thing coming out. So some cars had it as an option and some didn't. I think they used acetylene gas for a lights back in that, in that time on cars, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I forget what gas. Some just had even kerosene lanterns on, on their automobiles. Some automakers did, but yeah. But basically, electric car, electric lights on cars was a new thing. So back then, they um, a lot of car manufacturers had that as an option, and Trumbo Car Company, I guess, decided to make that a standard feature on their automobiles, which probably helped them in sales and stuff a little bit. The 1915 models debuted with an upgraded drivetrain and introduced of additional models, a light delivery car, but cycle cars were mainly a fad in the United States and despite, despite Trumbo's very robust engineering, the tiny design of most cycle cars gave the entire segment um, se segment segment 
a poor reputation. However, the trombone cards did prove popular overseas. In fact, the majority of trombones pr produced in the two years the company was in business were exported easily to set easily to do since Bridge, Bridgeport boats boats a fine harbor on Long Island Sound source claimed that about 2,000 jumbo cars were produced in all with perhaps 1,500 exported to Europe and Australia. Both left and right hand drive models were built. Thus, the Trumbo employed a measure of success despite the lack of a large home market. So, why did the company fail? On May 1st, 1915, Isaac Trumbo Isaac checked into cabin B1 aboard a ship headed for the the United Kingdoms, where he expected to negotiate a nice deal and order for, order for 300 of his cars. He was bringing along 20 automobiles to show other prospective dealers and distributors, bidders, distributors, <clears throat> the ship he booked passage on was the majestic the RMS La Tanica Las L U S I T A N I A the La Tanica La Tanica a proud and fast British luxury liner however British was at war with Germany at the time and a German U-boats were wreaking havoc on the Atlantic shipping. The unthinkable happened on the afternoon of May 7th. A German U-boat torpedoed the Lustanica, an unarmed passenger ship 11 miles off the coast of Ireland. A second unexplained international explosion quickly finished off the, La, the Latanica and in fewer than 20 minutes he the sh she slipped under the waves a total of 1,198 passengers and crew died with her including Isaac Trumbo his body was later recovered apparently Isaac had been the main spark plug for the firm, and with his death came not long afterwards the death of Trumbo's motor car company. His grieving brothers quit the car business, declaring they would produce produce mu, mu, mutations m u n i t i o n s as a way of avenging his death. So basically what happened is the brothers when they found out that their brother Isaac Trumbo died in a shipwreck wreck, they just decided to stop. According to this article and other research I found online, they just decided to cease production of the Trumbo car company and just call quits on it basically. And they, it's probably because they didn't feel right about not having their brother there because basically it sounds like Isaac Trumbo was the main brains of the car operation. And without them, they probably felt like they couldn't continue on in the car industry and stuff. So they decided, you know, let's just give up the ship and call it day. But yeah, um, here's a picture of what their um, Trumbo car looked like. Um, there's, I'll be probably throughout this video will be putting on the picture so but here's what their their um picture of their car looks like um the um here's the hard top model the um, actual full i guess called hard top model and then the um convertible model they had 
Again, they only had a small production of cars because of what sadly tragic tragic happened to him, Isaac Trumbull. But when I see these kind of articles, it is kind of fun to see what what they would have been like today had they been able to continue production and stuff on these car companies that went under there for whatever reason and stuff but yeah and when i saw a picture of this trombone i first heard about because i was doing some research on youtube of vintage cars from the 1900s and i happened to stumble upon a video of a guy having one at a car show basically and and he was showing it off and then i thought yeah hey, that looks like a neat car to do some more research on and that's where i am today but yeah but there's an article about the Trumpo car company and again here's another picture of what it would look like what one of their cars looked like that they made and stuff and but there's the article i'll put links in the description if you'd like to go back and read this article for yourself and and stuff and stuff so and, and so far from all the other websites that I looked at on the internet doing, I even did a Wikipedia search and basically what this article was saying is also what Wikipedia was saying and other websites as well. So I'm going to say that this article is pretty accurate on the history of Trumbo and stuff. Because that's what I try to do is look, if I'm looking up history of vintage cars, try to see what the internet is saying, what multiple websites are saying before I... And, and try to find one, an article or something that matches what basically the world is saying and stuff to make sure it's pretty accurate and stuff. So, so from what I've been seeing out there on the history I've been doing on Trumbo, this article is pretty accurate on what happened, how did Trumbo get started, and, and how it went under and stuff. So I'm going to say this is a pretty accurate um, website and it's neat. But yeah, my thoughts on that is that's a neat car i i really i really like it i i was always kind of into the kind of compact little cars like that little cycle car i i think it would be neat to have one of those cars today and be able to cruise around town and hit up local um car shows and classic car shows and stuff and, and show it off because i think that'd be a neat little car for people i think that would get a lot of attention to and if if I even if I knew how to do it, I'd love to make a, almost a reproduction of one of those. But yeah, I one thing I will say about the company is I do like the fact how they um they made um on their cars um electric lights and electric horn a standard option electric lights in a ways a standard option on their cars than versus some cars because again at that time. Electric battery operated lights, they just call them electric lights, were were a new thing for cars and at that time period in the 1900s that was a new thing for cars and it wasn't really a standard. Most cars didn't even have big old headlights on the front. Some of them just had like little gas lanterns up by the windshield on the passenger side and the driver's side where normally mirrors would, would go on cars nowadays. They just had, some just had more gas lanterns and, and some had just gas lights all together, you know. They didn't make big round lights on the front that were gas powered. I think they were settling gas, if I remember right, I'm not for sure on the type of gas. I'll have to do go back and research again. I researched it once and I'll have to research it again about what kind of gas that a lot of cars back then used for for um, powering lights and stuff, but yeah, most, but back then, a lot of cars just had gas lighting versus electrical lighting, and 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 back then, if you bought a car that came standard was electric lighting, that was a cool, wow thing. Just like back not too long ago, there was a time in my generation when if a car came with a television or a DVD player installed, that was a wow, cool thing, and like nowadays, having a car was for a short while having a car with a built-in GPS was a cool thing and stuff, you know. I I one time even drove a Jaguar car for a short while that back when it was made it was a 2005 Jaguar. It was a rush bucket junker that I drove around a little bit and and back and when that car was made, Bluetooth was was an option and if you would have had Bluetooth in that car you would have been like the coolest cat around and stuff, but yeah. 
But basically, that's how electric lights were back then. Is was like if you bought a car that came standard with electric lights, that was like a cool thing and everything. And, but yeah, yeah. But I liked how kind of kind of small, and compact the way the um Trumbo cycle car looked like and stuff. You know, I I think that was like I think that's kind of a neat little cool little car they they tried to build there. Uh, and according to this article and, and others out there on the web, on the internet, Trumbo did try to manufacture the cycle car here in the, they did try to sell it here in the United States, but for some reason, Americans just wasn't really into cycle cars and it was just a fad that kind of came in, people thought it was kind of cool for a while and then they just like, eh, it, it, and thought it was cool for a while and then they just thought, eh, it's not, it doesn't make sense to have one or whatever and so so they ended up doing a lot better in other countries and selling them to foreign countries and stuff which is usually the case I notice a lot of there's a lot of foreign countries out there that are more into the compact cars versus where Americans are kind of more into the bigger bigger cars and stuff but I think that would be neat to this day if I was rich and loaded with money to find a a Trumbo and be able to ride around in one and stuff, but they're very rare. You know, they only made about 2,000 of them, and so if you happen to own a Trumbo, well, whether it's the convertible model or the hardtop model, be shocked and stuff. And, and even if you did find one on today's market, like at some antique um auto auction or something, you're going to spend a lot of money. They ain't going to be cheap, you know. Especially if the owner up knows what he's got and stuff that's trying to sell it and everything, but yeah. But, oh no, I think the, um, seeing pictures of what's out there, I'll be putting some pictures in this video out there, of the Trumbo car. I gotta say, it's a, I think it's a really neat, neat car. I really like what they did there and stuff and think it's cool, but yeah, it's, I think it's a neat looking car, cool. I wish I could have could drive one drive one around today and stuff. So, yeah, but there you have it. There's the history of the Trumbo Car Company. Um, that was started in 1912 and ceased production in 1915 due to the fact that one of the brothers, Isaac Trumbo, died in a um died in a um ship uh a shipwreck there um. Um, the, a German U-boat, I guess, destroyed the ship he was on because British, Great Britain, the United Kingdoms, and Germany were fighting at the time, which I think that was around the time of um, World War One. I, I think, was starting there. So, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. So, he, unfortunately, Isaac Trumbo passed away. His brothers decided, you know what, since he passed away and he was the main brains of this operation, we're just going to stop, cease production and go do something else is basically from my understanding so yeah there you have it if you like this sort of content give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you thought this was a good video bad video whatever comment your thoughts below comment your thoughts below what you thought you know and and if you heard about the trumbo car company you know feel free to comment your thoughts if you think they was a cool cool and interesting car or whatever you know your thoughts, comment them below. Don't forget to share this video with everyone you know, because that's going to help me, Boomhauer69, in um, making this YouTube channel possible and stuff by you people sharing my content and stuff. And hope you all have a good day. And again, thank you for watching Boomhauer69's channel.